Hello dears. Uh, معاكم uh, دكتور عبير عمر عطية وفي مادة اللي هي Cultural Studies 2 الكود uh, 1205 بعتذر لحضراتكم عن عدم uh, قدرتي على ال, uh, الوجود بشكل فيزيكال في بعض محاضراتنا نظرا لظروف مرضية ولكن كان لازم يبقى في بديل عن وجودي معاكم كل جمعتين وفضلت ان انا اعمل تسجيلات تبقى فيها شيء مختلف عن المحاضرات المسجله اللي نازله لحضراتكم على السايت بتاعكم او اللي موجوده على اليوتيوب مختلفه بشكل فيلمي يعني انا هعتمد فيها على ان انا اقدم المعلومات اللي هي موجوده في اليونتس بتاعتنا بس في صوره افلام الافلام دي they are short movies ولكن وطبعا هم in English بتغطي الفترات التاريخيه اللي المفروض احنا بندرسها وبنعرفها كباك جراوند انفورميشن على التطور التكنولوجي اللي كان بيحصل في تاريخ انجلترا من قبل العصور التاريخيه اللي هي ابتدت تؤرخ التاريخ فبنبتدي من اول ما قبل التاريخ في عندنا 3 يونتس عليه اللي هو الستون ايج ويلي البرونز ايج ويلي الايرون ايج الثلاث محاضرات اللي عند حضراتكم ممثلين للثلاث يونتس اللي موجوده في الكتاب معلوماتهم موجوده اوريدي عند حضراتكم والتركيز فيها على الديفلوبمنت في التكنولوجي ولكن لازم نبقى فاهمين كويس قوي الخلفيه التاريخيه مش هقدر ان انا اتكلم على انجازات لناس موجوده في مكان من غير ما اقول امتى كان ده بيحصل وكانت الظروف ايه سواء كانت مناخيه او سياسيه لازم ده المفروض نبقى عارفينه بتمنى طبعا الفيديوهات دي تدي باك جراوند انفورميشن تدعم اللي موجود عندنا في الكتاب واللي حضراتكم بتشوفوه في المحاضرات ومش عايزه حد يقول طب وهي المحاضرات دي لازمتها ايه او ايه علاقتها بامتحاننا لان احنا متفقين ان الامتحان اج... <تصفيق> سوري <تصفيق> بيبقى اجراء بيتم في نهايه الكورس وانا شايفه ان الكتاب وافي ومستوفي طريقه الاسئله اللي هتتوقعوها في الامتحان وتدريبات كتيرة جدا موجودة عندكم في ستة ابليكيشنز على الستة يونتس اللي موجودة في الكتاب زائد ان في تأكيد على المعلومات اللي احنا هننتظر نختبر فيها في امتحاننا في المحاضرات المسجلة الستة اللي موجودة عند حضراتكم على السايت وعلى اليوتيوب فالمحاضرات دي اللي انا بسجلها كميك اب كلاسز بنسميها ميك اب سيشنز محاضرات تعويضيه عن تواجدي بينكم واحنا كنا متفقين في بدايه الكورس ان لقاءاتنا لقاءات نقاشيه وليست للشرح لان ده اوريدي معمول في المحاضرات المسجله ف احنا بنستعرض المعلومات بس بصوره شيقه اكتر ومن خلال ماده فيلميه في هنا في المحاضرة دي هيبقى في تو فيديوز أنا بغطي فيهم الثري يونتس الأولانيين يعني نص المنهج بتاعنا هسيب مع حضراتكم الفيديو الأول هنشوفه ونشوف الـ Origins of a Nation بدايات تكوين شعب اللي هم طبعا The British People وزي ما شرحنا قبل كده احنا المفروض بنبتدي نشوف تكوين البريتش ايلز من البدايه كان عامل ازاي احنا عندنا كمان قبل الستون ايج كان في الايس ايج الجليسير فالفيديو اللي هنقدمه في الاول دلوقتي هيبتدي من الجليسير ايج ويتوقف عند الايرون ايج طبعا مش بس هيتكلم على نشاه ال الجزر نفسها هيتكلم على الانهابتنس السكان هيتكلم على their style of life 
زي ما احنا عارفين مادة الكالتشر بتقدم the style of life ايه الكاستمز بتاعتهم ايه الترديشنز بتاعتهم وبعد ما نشوف الفيلم ممكن ان احنا ناكد على بعض النقاط اللي لازم هنراعيها واحنا بنذاكر الثري يونتس الاولانيين now i leave you with the video 33000 years ago britain was a desolate frozen wasteland not yet an island it was unrecognizable from the britain of today a featureless landscape without a tree in sight herds of mammoth reindeer and wild horses followed migration routes that took them across the entire north eurasian continent in search of new grazing grounds bands of humans followed in their wake never settling in any one place always on the move theirs was a world of ice and stone Yet from these unwelcoming beginnings, humans eventually settled in Britain, beginning with communities that hugged the coasts and rivers, who then gave way to agricultural workers who transformed the landscape with their farming. The history of Britain is one most people know something about, perhaps the Tudors or the Victorians, 1066 and World War II, but how exactly they all link together and what those gaps are in between is less familiar. This is the first episode in an 11-part series exploring this story, starting with the very first people to set foot in Britain through to the very times we live in today. This is the story of how Britain came to be, how our land and its people came to be forged over thousands of years. This is the history of Britain. To those mammoths, the remains of one, along with a human who had taken part in hunting it, have since been discovered in a cave in South Wales. The bodies had been buried side by side, intentionally placed there as part of a funeral ritual. Perhaps during the hunt, this individual had died, and his companions had his and the mammoth's remains interred together. Those remains are 33,000 years old, but the first human remains found in Britain are 800,000 years old. They do not belong to our species of human, Homo sapiens sapien. For hundreds of thousands of years, there were several types of human on the planet at the same time. Another kind, the Neanderthals, along with the tools they created, have been found in Britain dating from 400,000 years ago. So, we Homo sapiens sapiens were one of only several species of human to have lived and walked on this land. But around 30,000 years ago, the frozen grip of the most recent ice age enveloped Britain. During that time, no humans could venture there and ice lay a kilometre thick over parts of the land. A warming of the planet 20,000 years later melted the ice and a Britain that we would more easily recognise today began to emerge. Released from the ice, a huge body of water called the Norwegian Trench swept in land and would eventually become the North Sea. But for several thousand years longer, Britain remained a peninsula of Europe. The melting ice came hand in hand with milder weather. The icy tundra that had once supported mammoths was replaced by temperate forests of birch and oak that in turn sheltered red deer. Though by the time humans could return to Britain, for whatever reason, only our species was left to do so. A fishing camp on the Isle of Cole, Scotland, dating back 9,000 years, is the earliest point archaeologists believe there were permanent bands of people in Britain. But since that time through to today, humans have continuously inhabited this land. At its height, Mesolithic Britain is estimated to have a population of around 5,000 individuals. Archaeological evidence shows us that they had tools made from wood, stone and animal parts, they buried their dead and planned for the future. By 6,000 BCE, as the ice continued to melt and the sea levels rise, these people became the first inhabitants of an island now cut off from mainland Europe. That means that when the first farmers arrived in Britain 2,000 years later, they arrived by boat, bringing seeds and livestock and a whole new way of life with them. Farming allows for more food than an individual needs, creating a surplus that can feed more people and support some who need not work in the fields, instead working on construction projects. Some of the greatest monuments in all prehistoric earth were built in Britain and Ireland. Stonehenge is the most famous, but there were dozens of other stone circles and elaborate
elaborate tombs built at this time. These monuments have religious overtones, which hints at a society run by priests, who base their worship around cosmological events like the winter solstice. In just a few hundred years, the population of Britain jumped from a few thousand to perhaps as many as a hundred thousand. Farming also led to land ownership, and that led to conflict over who controlled it. Humans had shown violence towards each other before, but a surplus of food that allowed people to construct stone monuments also allowed them to develop more effective weapons of war, such as the longbow. The Battle of Crickley Hill, 3500 BCE, is the earliest known battle in Britain. It was fought, as many other battles have since, over who should control the land. This early period is called the Stone Age because the most versatile material humans had to work with, other than wood, pottery and animal parts, was stone. Metals are easier to shape and can be both lighter and stronger than stone, but are rarely found in their pure form. Instead, they're deposited in different types of rock, so humans were not aware of metal's potential. But around 6,000 years ago in the Balkans, people discovered how to extract copper ore from rock, and that knowledge eventually spread to Britain with the arrival of the Beaker people, so named because their remains have often been found besides Beaker-like pottery. Until the Beaker people, Britain was technologically backward compared to the rest of Europe, but the large quantities of copper ore found in Ireland and tin in Cornwall propelled it to the forefront of a new age in human development. Copper is a soft metal, too easily bent out of shape or its edges dulled to be much use as a tool, but copper and tin mixed together form bronze, the hardest metal of its time. With this literally cutting-edge technology, bronze produced better axe heads and the first swords, which were used as symbols of wealth. From a time of cosmological priests, status now came from owning bronze. Bronze Age Britain ushered in a new world of commerce and trade, as this newfound wealth fed a new demand for luxury goods from Europe and the Mediterranean. Settlements in Britain rapidly increased. Improved agricultural tools and a possible warming climate had improved Britain's productivity, perhaps increasing its population to half a million in only a few centuries. The Bronze Age had brought Britain a new society, more separated by class. Trade had increased and the first proper villages and neighbourhoods from which cities would one day blossom were founded. Compared to bronze, iron is an altogether better metal. It is strong enough to be hammered and rehammered into whatever shape is needed, not simply cast into a permanent one. Iron tip plows allowed for more effective land cultivation and so a greater yield of crops. And it accompanied a technological revolution which saw the creation of the first machines in Britain, like the rotary kern, which took away much of the back-breaking labor manually grinding grain required. An economic crisis at the end of the Bronze Age broke down the established trade networks. As a consequence, strong regional identities developed, where trade was centred locally and land was more fiercely defended than ever. In the north, bows, and in the south, hill forts were built from around 500 BCE. They were there to defend territory and keep others out. This was a violent time, and it allowed for a new type of leader to emerge. Not a cosmological priestly one of the Neolithic period, or the wealthy trading elite of the Bronze Age, but a warrior class who could lead and protect their people and these warriors could lead their people on horseback of course horses had been around then but without the horse shoes and bites and reins and saddles they'd been too troublesome to use regularly the iron age led to mounted ridden horses and so revolutionized warfare to better show off status there were ceremonial shields and swords evidence of this come from the snettingham treasure dated to 75 bce which includes a gold torch this was an altogether new type of status symbol. This was a sign of kingship. Some of these leaders even began to make their own currency, allowing their symbols of royal authority to be spread throughout society by the exchange of coins. But despite the regional differences, a shared Celtic cultural heritage also existed. It stretched across all of Britain and Ireland and into Europe. They had a common, though very regionalised language, produced sophisticated art and held common religion religious beliefs. The Celtic spiritual leaders were called Druids and they exercised great power over Celtic
music culture and were in contact with each other beyond the frontiers of the individual kingdoms. Druids appeared to have been the glue that held Celtic society together. By 100 BCE, the population had risen to as many as 1 to 2 million individuals. As trade with Europe returned, so too did the violence decline and the use of hill forts dwindle. But the trade with Europe also brought Celtic Britain into contact with Rome, an expanding and powerful empire in the Mediterranean, and Rome would change Britain forever. زي ما شفنا مع بعض الفيديو عامل تريس للهيستوري بالنسبه للبريتش ايلز زي ما احنا متفقين ذا يونايتد كينجدوم هي مجموعه من الايلز في العصور اللي هي ما قبل التاريخ ما كانتش اصلا جزر منفصل عن بعض ولكن زي ما شفنا they sep- they were separated with the melting of ice بين طبعا الفيديو اللي احنا قلناه قبل كده في محاضراتنا البدايات كانت لناس who were called the Celts اللي هم early settlers والمفروض ان هم كانوا ناس very primitive واكيد حياتهم كانت so easy اهم ما كان يشغلهم هو finding food and water مفهوم الارض والبوردرز والحدود لم يظهر الى نهاية الايرون ايج لكن في بدايات الستون ايج الموضوع ما كانش فيه اي نوع من الجريد الطمع ما كانش فيه اي نوع من سيكينج باور البحث عن سلطة او نفوذ هي العملية كلها كانت وي نيد تو ايت اند درينك طبعا الاوكيوبيشنز بتاعتهم كانت برضو هي اللي بتوفي التزامات حياتهم سواء كانت من الهانتينج او الفيشينج واكيد اللي كان الماده اللي موجوده حواليهم كانت مينلي ستون بسايدز وود اللي هو طبعا تمبر اللي هو من التريز وبالتالي المواد دي كانت هي اللي بتصنع منها التولز اللي هي بتساعدهم في الديلي لايف و الويبنز كمفهوم كانت اللي بتستخدم فور هانتينج ما كانتش فيها فكره ان احنا نتقاتل مع بعض لان لسه الطمع ما كانش موجود او فكره ان انتوا عندكم حاجه واحنا عايزينها الناس كانت بيموفوا اون فروم وان بليس تو انذر سيرشينج فور فود اند ووتر والدنيا ما كانتش فيها اي حاجه اكتر من كده فمفهوم الاجريكالتشر ما كانش واضح بالنسبه لهم ات واز فيري بريميتيف بريماتيور مجرد سكراتشنج للارض علشان ان هم يزرعوا اي حاجه بسيطه موجوده ومتاحه بالنسبه لهم هل كان في اي نوع من العلاقات ما بين الناس دي والكونتيننت اللي هي اوروبا نفسها في الوقت ده ما كانش باين قوي ولكن مع مرور الوقت المفروض ان في ايميجرنتس كانوا بييجوا من الكونتيننت اللي هي يوروب نفسها ويبتدوا ييجوا عن طريق البوتس اللي معموله طبعا من الخشب لمجرد ان هم يتبادلوا نوع من المقايده انتوا عندكوا ايه طب ناخد منكوا ايه ونديكوا ايه ما كانتش فكره ان اللي قادم من الميدل ايست او من الكونتيننت عنده الرغبه في الاستيطان نفسه بننتقل بعد كده للبرونز ايج وزي ما قلت لحضراتكم في محاضراتنا مفيش عصر بننام ونصحى تاني يوم العصر التاني جه لا بيبقى في زي ما سمعنا في الفيديو اوفرلاب يعني في حاجه بنكتشفها فبالتالي على ما تبدا تبان قيمتها ونقدر نفعلها في حياتنا بتبتدي الحاجه القديمه يقل استخدامها ولكن لا يختفي ففي البرونز ايج ابتدوا كانوا يلاقوا في بطن الارض ميتلز كان اوائلها كان الكوبر وبعده كان التن وقدروا مع قدوم البيكر بيبل اللي هم جايين من الميدل ايست ان هم يعرفوا طريقه مزج ميكسنج كوبر وذ تن علشان خاطر يعملوا ماده ثالثه اللي هي البرونز 
ف فضلت الستون والكلاي والود مواد مستخدمة ولكن ظهر أهمية وجود المعدن المتل فالكوبر والتين والبرونز كانت أهم المعادن اللي موجودة في البرونز إيج هل حصل تغيير في الأكيوبيشنز بتاعتهم؟ استمرت برضو لتوفير الطعام بالنسبة لهم hunting and fishing and uh, cultivating the land اتطورت طبعا اتطورت الكالتيفيشن او الاجريكالتشر لان ابتدى بعد ما كنت بستخدم ادوات في الزراعه بسيطه معموله من الكلاي والود ابتديت استخدم فيها المعدن وبالتالي اي واز ايبل كساكن في هذا الوقت ان انا تو جو ديبر انتو ذا ايرث مع ظهور المعدن الاخير اللي هو الايرون وطبعا ده معدن قوي جدا ابتدينا ندخل في العصر الثالث اللي هو الايرون ايج هنشوف بعد كده في الفيديو الثاني ان مفيش عصر بيتقال عليه الستون ايج الا لما بيكون زي اي شيء في الدنيا لو بيجينينج وميدل واند بداياته والذروه بتاعته وقرب نهايته وظهور العصر اللي بعده هتلاقوا حضراتكم لما نيجي نتكلم على الفيديو اللي بعد كده هنلاقي ان في مسميات للمراحل الثلاثه لاي عصر موجود وخاصه الستون ايج مع نهايه الايرون ايج ابتدى الانسان يظهر الجريدنس بتاعته الطمع ابتدى يبقى طامع لان الارض اثبتت ان فيها ثروات فابتدى يبقى في مطمع وظهرت كلمه وور في الايرون ايج فابتدوا يعملوا اسلحه علشان يتقاتلوا بيها فظهرت السبيرز والسوردز والشيلدز كل ده لان ابتدى يبقى في عندي هجوم على اللاند ومن هنا هيبتدي يبقى في بوردرز بوردرز اللي هي رسم حدود علشان كل واحد يلتزم بمكانه والطامع لو جه علشان يدخل ارض جاره المفروض طبعا ان في الحاله دي في وور بتندلع ده ملخص سريع جدا للفيديو انا مستوفياه بشكل مفصل في المحاضرات المسجله اللي موجوده مع حضراتكم من الاول واحنا اوريدي لما كنا بنلتقي قلنا تفاصيل أكتر كتير عن ده ولكن اهتميت أن أنا ألخصها لحضراتكم من خلال مادة فيلمية شيقة شوية بالنسبة للدين برضو لازم نعرف أن ما كانوش لهم دين بمعنى أن ما فيش عندهم جاد التوحيد ما كانش ظهر لأن ده هيجي يدخل مع الرومانز بالكريستيانيتي ومال اللي كانوا بيعملوه بنسميها كالتس أو ريتشولز شعائر بيمارسوها وكان المجهول بالنسبة لهم هو السوبر ناتشرال باورز اللي ممكن هي دي اللي تحميهم فكانت معظم الجودز بتاعتهم رموز للسوبر ناتشرال باورز دي أو حاجات من الطبيعة نفسها نقدر نقول ان الاثر الباقي من ايامهم اللي هو معلم ستون هنج والمعمل المع... المعبد ده عباره عن دائره مستديره سوري دائره حجريه كلها من الستون وانروفت ملهاش سقف وزي ما شفنا في الفيديو ان كان طبعا فيها الدرويدز البريستس الكهنة وكانوا بيعبدوا الشمس حاجة بتقربنا من الحضارة المصرية القديمة دلوقتي هوري حضراتكم فيديو تاني برضو بيتكلم على الحقب الثلاثة اللي هي الستون ايج والبرونز ايج والايرون ايج ولكن في صورة أبسط كتير وفيها زي ما قلت لحضراتكم تقسيمة كل عصر بالثلاث مراحل اللي فيه هنشوفه مع بعض Let's get this clear. Prehistory is commonly divided into three ages, Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. The Stone Age is further divided into three periods too, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic. Setting a start or ending on these periods is difficult because they vary according to region and sometimes they overlap. So, keep that in mind. Now. Let's begin. We have to go back in time, a time before history. (laughs) 
No, that's far too back in time. Where we want to go is to the last ice age. Last ice age! Welcome to Paleolithic Britain. Britain was a peninsula. In fact, Britain was not Britain yet, but let's call it in that way. It has been intermittently inhabited for at least 500,000 years. Its first inhabitant was the Homo heidelbergensis. Neanderthals came in 300,000 years ago, and Homo sapiens did it 40,000 years ago, give or take. These peoples were hunter-gatherers who followed herds and made stone tools. They came and went from and to continental Europe. Climate regularly switched between warm and cold periods, also called interglacial and glacial periods. And in 10,000 BC, the last of the great glacial periods ended. The world was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. The ice began to melt and Britain became fertile and sea levels began to rise. Soon, plants began to grow and animals began to multiply. Where once there was ice, now were forests. This is Mesolithic Britain. With more welcoming climate, people began to come back, looking for animals, fish and other food. It is believed that people built houses but didn't stay permanently. In fact, they came and went seasonally, following game and good weather. They started to make more complex tools, combining stone with wood. Mesolithic people built small communities closely connected with nature, but nature didn't care. And at around 6100 BC, a tsunami struck and the cataclysmic wave finally flooded the narrow bridge that still connected Britain to the continent. Britain was now an island. And this is the beginning of the Neolithic, a starting point of major changes in human history. Gradually, people began to produce food instead of acquiring it. Farming led to permanent settlements, and these led to bigger and stronger communities. They grew barley and wheat, and they also raised sheep, goats, cattle and pigs. From about 3500 BC, new types of communal monuments appeared. Timber circles, circular earthwork called henges, and from about 3000 BC, stone circles such as Castlerigg, Avebury, and of course, Stonehenge. These monuments seem to represent attempts to create sacred spaces. These were the settings for elaborate religious ceremonies which may have been connected to beliefs about the fertility of people, animals, and crops. Animals and crops. This is the Bronze Age. Around 2500 BC, migrants came into Britain. These were the Bell Beaker people. They brought together metalworking skills and a whole new culture. They were called in that way because of the shape of the pottery vessels they made. But most importantly, the Beaker people brought a new sense of self and individuality. Whereas during the late Stone Age, people were buried in communal tombs, during the Bronze Age, people started being buried alone, together with their favorite possessions. Another development in this age is housing. Bronze Age Britons built houses where they could live permanently. Farm houses built to last a lifetime. Permanent houses led to the creation of the first villages. It was also a time where many trade networks were developed. Copper, tin and bronze objects were rapidly traded across Europe. For certain, Britain was separated from the continent, but was really connected by commerce.
The Iron Age in Britain started around 800 BC when the Celts brought iron work into the Isles. They produced fine metalwork and enjoyed feasting, music and poetry. This new metal was used for tools which made farming much easier than ever before. People lived in hill forts which were surrounded by walls and ditches and warriors defended their people from enemy attacks. Inside hill forts, families lived in round houses. In the center of a round house was a fire where meals were cooked in a cauldron. The inhabitants of Iron Age Britain did not leave any written records, so we only know about them through their fashion. People expressed their identity through their clothes, jewelry and belongings. People believed in powerful spirits. They met to worship the spirits in sacred places. Priests known as druids led religious ceremonies such as sacrifice animals and sometimes humans and gave precious offerings to the spirits. During the British Iron Age, large tracts of land in southern and eastern Britain were used to produce crops and the Celts who lived there were skilled farmers. Farming methods remained substantially unchanged amongst the British peasantry from the Iron Age to the 17th century. To round up this video, remember that prehistoric Britain is divided into three, Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age. Remember that for your next exam. Okay, زي ما شوفنا برضو ده كان فيديو ملخص بقى التكنولوجي والبروجرس اللي حصل في حياة الكالتس من بداية الستون ايج وحتى نهاية الايرن ايج التفاصيل الصغيرة معمولة وظاهرة ومكتوبة في الفيديو التاني موجود كل ما له علاقة بالاجريكالتشر كل ما له علاقة بالريليجن كل ما له علاقة بالصناعات اللي كانوا ابتدوا يعملوها من البوت من البوتري من الفيلجز تقسيمات القرى اللي كانوا بيعيشوا فيها وزي ما قلنا استمرت البريتش ايلز منعزل عن الكونتيننت الحاجه الوحيده اللي كانت بتربط ما بين البريتش ايلز والكونتيننت اللي هي يوروب كانت التريد أرجو إن تكونوا استمتعتم بالتو فيديوز دول ولملكوا كل المعلومات الضرورية واللازمة بطريقة ممتعة ولطيفة وبإذن الله المحاضرات طبعا مكملة للفيديوز دي لأن الفيديوز دي مجرد إطار فيلمي في انترتينمنت مع توثيق للمعلومات Thank you very much and let's meet in the following lecture